I talk about this one here, existential forgery attack on signatures. So um, we're going to generate an RSA key and then sign a message with an RSA signature and then show how you can forge messages that match a known signature. Oh, and I see a personal message, I think. Ah, oh, I see. Yeah, good. Yeah, I figured out who it was. Uh, Woot, I think. Let me check. Yeah. I'll make another. All right. Good. All right. So let's uh, so let's do some of this, and I'm going to shove the instructions to the side and bring up the command prompt and do it, and we'll see how it goes. So let me find my shell, okay, and get out of here. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is generate a RSA key pair. So you can do that this way. You can use OpenSSL, generate RSA, and I'm going to make a 512-bit key, which is the length they originally recommended back in the 70s, which is no longer considered very secure, but it's good enough for us to just practice with. So this made, it chose E to be 65537. Remember, E is used to encrypt and D to decrypt, and everybody always pretty much just uses this number for E to make encrypting um, easy because you expect weak client machines to be encrypting like cell phones and you make decrypting hard which is what happens on the powerful server. So this is the number in base 10 and this is the number in hexadecimal. One, three zeros and a one. All right, and so it's made a private key um, and it's put it in this file, your name pkey.pem. So if I look in that file, There it is. This is the uh, this base 64 format of a private key. And as we talked about before, you can parse that key and see what's inside it by using OpenSSL with ASN1 parse. And that will take this blob of base 64 and it will extract the contents. And the contents are an integer, which is always zero. Then comes N, E, and D and then some other numbers like P and Q. But the thing I care about is N, E, and D. And we're going to need them later, so I'm going to copy N, E, and D and just put that in a text file over in my text editor. So we've got it for later. All right. In fact, I think I'm going to just tidy it up a bit. This is N, and this is E. And this is D, and I'm going to have to add some more code to this later to deal with the fact that it's in hexadecimal. But at least now I've got the basic information I'm going to need later. All right. Now we can, um, all right. Now we can use the, we can generate the public key from that private key, which is in this P key file, again with OpenSSL. And that's here. You use OpenSSL, you read in the private key here, and you generate the public key, which is what you would tell other people. And now uh, you can look at that. P U there. And it's much shorter than the private key because the public key is much simpler. Remember, the private key had about seven numbers, the public key just has N and E. And you can get that out of there with the same OpenSSL uh, utility to print out what's in the public key. And you see it is just uh, N and E. It printed it out in a strange format, but that mess is N and that's E. All right. So now uh, we're going to make a signature. And here's how it works. First, you have to have a key pair with N and E and a private key of D, which we have. Then you write a message, X. X is a number. 
And then you calculate the signature by taking x to the d mod n. Remember, d is the decryption key, and that's a secret. You don't tell anybody that. So Bob, who made the pair, is the only person that knows d, and they take the message to the d mod n, and that is called the RSA signature. Anybody can verify that by taking the signature to the e mod n, because d times e is 1, so that takes you back to x. So if you take the signature to the public exponent e mod n, you will get the original message, and that proves that the message has been signed by Bob. Um, all right, that's the game here. So let's do that uh, in Python. Let me shove this to the side. Actually, I can leave it visible. All right, so we do Python 3. And let me make this skinnier. All right, so I'm going to make a message, which is going to be hello from your name. It's going to turn it into a hex and then print it. So here's the long hexadecimal version of the message, and that is 38 characters long. Okay, now we're using 512-bit RSA, so the message must be 64 bytes or less, and that's good. So it's 38 bytes, so that's definitely less. So now we can sign it. Now, to sign it, um, first I'm going to sign it with the example information here. So that's going to be clear. So I've defined XE to be the message. Now, oh, I can't, so I can't clear that way. All right. So anyway, here's the, um, so here's the N I used before. This is an N and an E and a D. And this is how you deal with the fact that they're in hexadecimal. You take the integer of that string mod six and uh, base 16. That's how you create a number from a hexadecimal value in Python. It's one way to do it. So now I've defined N, E, and D. So now all I have to do is this. I have to take my XE, which was my message in hex, and I have to convert it to a number with int 16. Then I have to take X to the D mod N, which is this, pow of X to the D mod N, and that's S. And then I turn it into hex, and this is SE. So that mess there is the signature of this message. And you can verify it by taking the signature to the E mod N. And then you just print it out in various formats. That number, XPN, should be the message recovered back. So there it is as an integer. You turn it into hex, you print it in hex, and then you can convert it back to letters, and you see it does turn back into the readable message. So only Bob can create a signature like this, which when raised to the E will recreate the message, um, because it requires knowledge of D. That's how signatures work. And if you keep track of your N, E, and D, you can do it again. And let me see if I can just do that. Um, so I go back here, N equals int of. So I, each of those numbers have to have int of comma 16. So let's do that. I'm just going to do it my, so this should be int of that, and int of that, and int of that, and then comma 16. Okay, so that's what I should do for N, E, and D. All right, and I'm missing the quotes, so I just screwed it up, all right. I have to have a quote at the end of these numbers, all right. There, so that's how I use my N, E, and D. All right, and now that I've done that, I just have to repeat this stuff to create that signature, which is X. There, that should be the signature matching my key. Okay, another blob of hexadecimal. And to verify it, this will be exactly the same because it only uses E. And E, and also now the N has been updated, so this should recreate the message. And it does. Okay, so anyway, I can make a message, I can sign it and the signature can be verified. So this seems great. The problem is 
you can forge messages that match signatures. That is called the existential forgery attack. What you do is if somebody gives you a signature, you calculate S to the E mod N and you call that the message. So if I use, I can use a completely bogus signature like just 15 in hexadecimal, a ridiculous signature that has a whole bunch of zeros. It's a valid signature in principle. There might be some key somewhere that would create that signature. And now I can just calculate the answer from that signature. And here's some code that will turn it into something readable. And see, that is just gibberish. Just unprintable characters and stars. And I use stars for unprintable characters. It's just gibberish. But I can create a text message which does match that signature. And so this is what is the fundamental problem with the way cryptography is used. There are systems that need to perform authentication. They would like to prove that you are the administrator. But instead of choosing an authentication routine, they choose an encryption routine, which is not the same thing. So they say, if you can create a valid signature, you must have the private key. And they don't look at the message. Now that's the problem. So I can create a message which matches a signature without knowing the private key. The message is garbage, but this has fooled some systems that say, oh, you must be the administrator because the signature matches. So that's all. They call that existential forgery attack. I can create a message that has signature. When we talked in previous lectures about message authentication codes, this is an attack we said we wanted to avoid. You want to make it so that if you don't have the private key, you cannot create any message signature pair at all. That's what you want. And RSA signatures do not have that desirable property. You can forge a valid message signature pair without knowing the private key. And that is not good. So that's the point here. And then there's a couple of challenges to uh, calculate a signature and then uh, perform an existential forgery attack, sign a message. So anyway, there's some uh, flags to harvest out of there. And that's what I wanted to show you. That's, uh, that's it for that one.